Hello everyone, I am Aruna Punna, your botany lecturer. Our lesson name is Molecular Basis of Inheritance. Already I completed three video classes of this lesson. Today I am going to teach you about the search of genetic material. Under this lesson, I will explain you the transformation in Griffith's experiment and the biochemical characterization of transforming principle. Just before going to Griffith's experiment, I will give you general information of his cell because this is related to the Griffith's experiment. You know all a simple cell structure inside the cell cell nucleus is present around the nucleus cytoplasm is present when we magnify this nucleus this is the clear view inside the nucleus you can see thin thread like structures these thread like structures are made up of dna and nucleosomes nucleosomes are bead like structures which are made up of proteins the nucleosome structure i explained in detail in previous classes so here the thin thread like structures are made up of dna and proteins the first time the DNA DNA and proteins of nucleus identified by Maischer. It is name of the scientist in 1869. And Maischer called the DNA and proteins of nucleus as nuclein. Later, the term nuclein changed as chromosome in 1888 by Waldeyer. After that, number of scientists like Gregor Mendel, Walter Sutton, Thomas Hunt Morgan did so many experiments and concluded that these chromosomes usually located in inside the nucleus. So, in the nucleus, DNA is present and proteins are present. And even RNA is present. Where is RNA? Here, inside the nucleus, a large structure you can see that is called nucleolus. This nucleolus can synthesis ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA means it is type of RNA. In RNA, three types of RNAs are there. mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. rRNA means nothing but ribosomal RNA. The types of RNAs I will explain in the next classes. So, this nucleolus produce ribosomal RNA. So, that is why in nucleus along with the DNA and protein, RNA is also present. Out of these three molecules, which molecule can act as genetic material? Scientists also don't know in the 19th century. That is why in inheritance, which molecule act as genetic material is a big question mark in 19th century. Do you know all inheritance? Inheritance means the characters pass done from parents to the next generation. So, in the inheritance, which molecule act as genetic material? In that search of genetic material, number of scientists did number of experiments. Out of so many experiments, in this class, I will explain you one experiment. That is, in 1928, Frederick Griffith did one experiment on Streptococcus pneumonia bacteria based on transforming principle. After explaining that experiment, you can understand the transforming principle. So, in Streptococcus pneumonia bacteria or you can call it as pneumococcus bacteria. In this, two different strains are there. Strains means varieties. One is S means smooth variety and another one is R means rough variety. Why it is smooth and why it is rough? Because in smooth varieties, around bacteria, one kind of mucous membrane is present. This mucous membrane is made up of polysaccharides. Around rough bacteria, mucous membrane is absent. That is why these names has been given. So, when these streptococcus pneumonia bacteria are grown in a petri dish, this is petri dish, usually smooth bacteria form smooth and shiny colonies and rough bacteria form rough colonies. Here, what is petri dish? Petri dish is like this. It is made up of plastic or glass. Here, two plates are there. One is overlapped by other one. So, in the laboratory, in the lower one, first we have to take a nutrient medium. Nutrient medium is made up of by adding carbohydrates hydrates, amino acids and uh, some vitamins and minerals. In this way, by adding all these uh, nutrient medium is prepared. On the nutrient medium, we have to keep the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria. Then what happens? These streptococcus pneumonia bacteria absorb nutrients from the nutrient medium and multiply rapidly and form in groups. So, these groups we can call it as colonies. Usually, smooth bacteria form smooth colonies because due to presence of mucous membrane, they are very shiny, they are very smooth. That is why so, here these colonies are very smooth and shiny, but in the case of rough bacteria, uh, they are very rough due to absence of mucous membrane. And the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria cause one kind of disease that is pneumonia. Pneumonia means uh, one kind of lung infection. And one more thing, 
Smooth varieties are virulent. Virulent means poisonous, toxic. Our varieties are not virulent, not poisonous, not toxic. So, when we inject these smooth bacteria into a mouse, what happens? This is virulent means poisonous. So, usually the mouse affected by pneumonia disease and it will die. When we inject rough bacteria into a mouse, these are not virulent, means not poisonous. That is why this mouse won't get pneumonia and it is remain healthy and it won't die. So here in this way two types of strains are there and now in which way Frederick Griffith did experiments. Here by using Streptococcus pneumonia bacteria Frederick Griffith did four experiments. This is first experiment, this is second experiment, this is third experiment and this is fourth experiment. One by one I will explain you. First experiment Frederick Griffith took living smooth cells. So these are virulent. He injected into a mouse. So what happens? Mouse get infected by pneumonia and mouse was dead. After that, the same living smooth strains of bacteria isolated means separated from dead mouse because scientists injected living smooth cells and so the same he isolated the same living smooth cells from dead mouse. In the second experiment, scientists injected living rough streptococcus pneumonia bacterial cells into a mouse. Already I taught you rough cells are not virulent. That is why here mouse didn't get infected by pneumonia. So mouse remains healthy. In the same way, the living R cells are isolated means separated from living mouse. What he injected living R cells and in the same way he separated the same living R strains from living mouse. In the third experiment, he took some living smooth cells in a test tube by using burner. The living smooth cells are heated and killed. So, in the third experiment, the scientist took heat killed smooth cells. These heat killed smooth cells are injected into a mouse. So, they are killed. That is why they could not cause pneumonia disease. That is why mouse remains healthy. So, they are killed cells. That is why they won't multiply inside the mouse. That is why nothing strain is isolated from the mouse. And in the fourth experiment, please concentrate on the fourth experiment. At a time, scientists use used two types of cells. One is heat killed smooth cells and other one is living rough cells. At a time he took two types of cells. So once again you go through previous experiments. Heat killed smooth cells are injected. Mouse is healthy. Living rough cells are injected into a mouse. At that time also mouse remains healthy. So in two conditions heat killed cells also didn't kill the mouse and living R cells also didn't kill the mouse. But when these two types of cells injected at a time into a mouse, what happened? The mouse get affected by pneumonia and the mouse was dead. This is surprising thing. And one more surprising thing is, scientists finally isolated living S strain of bacteria from dead mouse. Actually, scientists didn't inject living S strain. Only he injected living R cells and heat killed smooth cells. But how these living S strains are came in the mouse. Once again, we go through the Griffiths experiment in short way. So, this is first experiment. Living smooth cells are injected into a mouse. Mouse was dead. Living R cells are injected into a mouse here and heat killed smooth cells are injected into a mouse. In this case also, mouse was alive and in the fourth experiment at a time, two types of cells are injected. Heat killed smooth cells and live R cells. So, what happened? Mouse get infected by pneumonia and mouse was dead. And surprisingly, scientists isolated living smooth cells from the dead mouse. What happened here? Griffith concluded that one kind of molecule from heat killed smooth cell transferred into a live R cell. Due to this transformation, the live R cell transformed into a live smooth cell. So, due to this live smooth cell only, the mouse infected by pneumonia and mouse was dead. So, due to transformation, one kind of new character developed in live R cells. Here, what is
is the new character? Usually, in live or cells, mucous membrane is absent. But due to this transformation, transformation means one kind of molecule transferred from heat killed smooth cells into live or cells. So, due to this transformation, around live or cells, mucous membrane, this is new character, mucous membrane is developed. So, automatically, whenever the mucous membrane is developed, live rough cells converted into live smooth cells. So, live smooth cells are virulent, poisonous, cause pneumonia disease. That is why, automatically, due to this transformation, the mouse get pneumonia and finally mouse was dead. But Frederick Griffith didn't give any clarification about the molecule. That means which molecule? Is it DNA? Is it RNA? Or is it protein? Which molecule transformed from heat killed smooth cells into live R cells? So what is that molecule? So in the search of that particular molecule, Oswald Avery, Colin MacLeod and MacLean McCarthy decided to find out that particular material which is responsible as a genetic material in heredity. Avery, MacLeod and McCarthy did this experiment to know that particular genetic material. So the main hypothesis of this experiment is the genetic material of the cell is either protein or DNA or RNA. DNA and RNA both comes under nucleic acid. So the experiment name is biochemical characterization of transforming principle. In this experiment, they took two types of cells that is heat killed smooth cells and rough streptococcus cells. So, first uh, they took heat killed smooth cells and make a solution in a test tube. Now, in the test tube, five types of molecules are present. One is lipids, second one is sugars, third one is DNA, fourth one is RNA and fifth one is proteins. So, here they want to concentrate on these three only. So, that is why scientists removed the lipids and sugars by adding some enzymes. So, now in this solution, after removing lipids and sugars, only three molecules are present that is DNA, RNA and proteins. Now, this solution is shifted into three other test tubes equally. To the first test tube, they add proteinase. To the second test tube, they add RNase. To the third test tube, they add DNase. What are these substances? Proteinase, RNase and DNase. These are enzymes. And you can observe the end word is ase. Always the enzyme name is end with ase. So usually proteinase, what is the action? The proteinase digest the protein. So when the proteinase added to this solution, protein is completely digested. So what happens in this protein is completely absent, no protein. So out of DNA, RNA and proteins, protein is digested. The remaining substances are only DNA and RNA. When RNA is enzyme added to the solution, RNA is completely digested. So no RNA. That is why only DNA and proteins are present. And when DNA's enzyme is added to this solution, DNA is completely digested. So there is no DNA. Only RNA and proteins are present. Again, these solutions are shifted into a conical flask. Each and every test tube solution shifted into other conical flask. To this solution, scientists finally added rough cells. So already I taught you in this experiment Avery, MacLeod and McCarthy took two types of cells that is heat killed smooth cells already here they were taken and uh, the next one is rough cells. Here rough cells are added. After one day surprisingly they observed that smooth cells are appeared. Here also smooth cells are appeared but here smooth cells are not appeared. So the solution is made by heat killed smooth cells. Finally they add rough cells. But here finally they got uh, living smooth cells are appeared. In this also living smooth cells appeared. In this smooth living cells are not appeared. Why? Because here transformation not occurred. Because in this only RNA and proteins are present. DNA is completely absent. Whenever DNA is completely absent at that time transformation not done. Here RNA only absent but DNA is present. So due to presence of DNA transformation takes place and living smooth cells are appeared. Here only protein is absent but DNA is present. So due to presence of DNA also here transformation occurred and living smooth cells are appeared. So what is the conclusion? 
for the transformation dna is must transformation always requires dna once we go through the griffiths experiment in the transformation what happened the genetic material that is dna transferred from heat killed smooth cells into live rough cells so what happened these live rough cells produced mucous membrane around them and live rough cells converted into live smooth cells so smooth cells are virulent they can cause pneumonia disease that is why the mouse infected by pneumonia disease and mouse was dead by doing this experiment avery macleod and mccarthy finally concluded that the transformation takes place by the activity of uh, dna only so the genetic material is dna but number of scientists didn't satisfy with this experiment so hershey and chase did another experiment to prove that genetic material is dna so in the next class i will continue with this topic the two marks and four marks question and answers of this lesson in english medium are in the description if you like this video please share and subscribe to my channel thank you